Hello, baby gang. Now let's get into the Axel Weber New York City conversation and then branch out from there into a larger conversation about influencers transplanting into New York City and using it for clout. So Axel Weber moved to New York City probably a couple years ago and makes TikToks, this is what got him famous, about his, you know, incredibly small apartment which he jokes is the smallest apartment in new york city and he also talks about his like little hacks and moves to find really cheap food and storage and all of that a lot of people are accusing axel weber of cosplaying poverty of sort of hamming up this idea that he doesn't have money and putting himself in this place where he's doing all these like expense hacks and things like that but he's not actually poor um, which I don't think he's ever claimed to be poor, but he certainly does seem to be fairly well off judging by Instagram family things. Now, I'm also not interested in delving into Axel Weber's family background and exact wealth right now or ever, but I'm more so interested in how we conduct that conversation because it seems to be fairly controversial. A lot of people get mad on TikTok when you talk about Axel Weber being rich or cosplaying as poor and i on one hand understand people feeling like the scrutiny is a bit over the top but i also very much understand the other side of the argument here's the thing i don't think axel weber is pretending to be poor and i don't think axel weber really has bad intentions or is trying to make light of poverty or different conditions in new york city i think he genuinely wants to live in this small space and he likes these different elements of where he lives at and he's having fun and he's making content out of it there's nothing really wrong with that the problem is more so the impact. I hear people talk about influencers transplanting to New York City a lot and moving away from LA, trashing LA, going to New York, complaining about New York, wanting to live this sort of main character lifestyle in New York. And a lot of New Yorkers get really mad at this. And there's a huge, huge history we can sort of get into about why native New Yorkers like myself are mad about this. The thing is, I don't think that the problem is that they're only showing one side of New York or that they live these unattainable lifestyles. I don't necessarily think the problem is, oh, they're just using New York for content. It's a lot deeper than that. And it's something that doesn't really have to do with individual influencers like Axel Weber or your favorite YouTuber who moved to New York City and now posts videos about things that they do with their roommates in their cool little apartment. Everybody's just trying to sort of do their thing and hustle and whatever. I'm trying to make money doing YouTube videos. I'm not, you know, immune to the thrills and exploits of capitalism, though I recognize how bad it is. But the problem is not about depicting or representing. I don't even think that the problem is people are only showing off corporate restaurants, corporate businesses, or these quirky little businesses and these, these cute little quirky things about New York City and ignoring everything else. Again, I think it's deeper than that. Let me just out and say it. The problem is what people do with the influence they wield. And it's a systemic problem. So this is a completely unstructured video. You'll have to bear with me. But I'm going to kind of get into detail about some of the things that irk me and what I'm asking for. I'm not asking for Axel Weber to not live in a small apartment, to not have fun in New York City, to not make content. I'm not interested in exposés. I'm not interested in trashing people. I'm interested in engaging people in a conversation about class and about how people in upper classes in our society are wielding their class privileges and how we can better that. So, Axel Weber. He lives in a small apartment. He likes showing off how small his apartment is and all these little things that come with not having money even though he has money. He's very into that lifestyle. Cool. But is Axel Weber really making an effort to also showcase the problems and the difficulties that are very real in other people's lives that are also to do with everything that he's showing off in his videos? Is Axel Weber giving a platform for poor people? Is Axel Weber putting some of his money and some of his influence to good use by helping the people around him. I'll let you answer that question. If you're a fan of his, let me know in the comments below about how you feel on that matter. But when it comes to a lot of influencers, I think that is the biggest, most frustrating thing. I don't fucking care if you want to live in New York City. 
people have been transplanting to New York City for decades and decades. It's it's a part of life. Like this is a very rich city technically and has been the center of commerce and so many opportunities and so many beautiful things for decades and decades this is not the first moment in history when influencers or just well-off people with influence have migrated to new york city for fun and for clout the problem is that when you've had your fun and you've gotten your clout and your money what happens then i am a very privileged person i've lived in new york all of my life basically i've had some years living elsewhere but this is my home i'm from queens like to be clear we're talking about new york city the boroughs we're not talking about new york state obviously and the more time passes the more i recognize my privileges but also the more me and my family encounter difficulties cue the oh you're just jealous of people with more money than you thing like you know like we're doing good i'm very lucky because i get to live with my mom and I have two parents in my life that are able to help me finance things. But my parents are struggling right now to make the money that they really feel like they need to make. My mother is going through a lot, job after job, issue after issue, exploitative situation after exploitative situation. Working is just not easy for her right now. And she's only getting older and her health is being affected. My dad, let's not talk about my dad. Really, I would like for you guys to approach this conversation with some distance and some respect for my family's privacy but i say these things to tell you i've watched how new york city can get really tough and i've watched it at a much more privileged level than most people do first of all i don't like this dichotomy of talking about the other side of new york or only showing the the one half of new york like the rich and the poor are like these two diametrically opposed halves the rich exist because of the poor and the poor are constantly everywhere. Poverty and difficulty and exploitation is everywhere. It's on the sidewalks that you walk on when you're filming. It is in the textiles that you use and the clothes that you wear. And it's not really a 50-50 proposition at all. In reality, 90% of the world around you that you're stepping in as a transplant in New York City is a world full of people struggling. and. Not once have I seen these influencers who have made so much money and gotten all this attention for hopping out over here and talking about the pandemic and how things changed or talking about these cool things that they saw in New York City today. Not once have I seen them take time out to be like, hey, let's give some attention to this problem that's happening in the neighborhood I live in. I've never seen them talk about the fucking MTA. I've never seen them talk about our mayoral races. You know, it's not even strictly political things. I'm not even asking people to adopt political ideologies that I support even though I might have a separate conversation about certain politics I'd like to talk to you about but ultimately a lot of this stuff isn't necessarily stuff that's attached to political views I don't think anybody can disagree that you would like to see homelessness go down that you would like to see people make more money that you would like to see people be able to not die because healthcare is so extraordinarily unaffordable for people it reminds me kind of of how people talk about vaccines and, and different behaviors that working class people need to get together as if they from their porches can sit there and understand the life and the view and the trauma that all these people experience to put them in these places where they make often bad decisions about their health. It reminds me of how people will not give their money to homeless people because, you know, that homeless guy is just going to spend it on some alcohol. Like, do you know how important fucking anything is even if it is a bottle of alcohol please have it have you ever experienced homelessness have you ever experienced that difficult of a level of poverty if you haven't then you have no business speaking on how people should try to ail themselves of their worries should try to spend their money to help themselves but these are the kinds of views that are perpetuated by people who can allow themselves to have a, a cloud of judgment around them behind a wall of security. And everybody's fucking judgmental. And again, I'm not trying to sit here and hate on people who make money, but I am a little bit concerned, let's say, about how influencers continuously utilize New York City for profit, for clout, for whatever, but continuously ignore the different things that they're affecting. 
We've talked about gentrification. Gentrification is a word that comes up quite often, and it's something that I think is it's interesting to bring up. I watched this video by Tiffany Ferg called LA is Dead and Everyone's Moving to New York City, and I thought it was a pretty good video. Tiffany Ferg always makes very good videos. But at the same time, a lot of it is just focused on influencers moving to New York City from LA and why that's seen as trendy, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of it, ultimately does have some detachment from the lifestyle that I'm constantly seeing, the lives of a vast majority of people in New York City and how people actually live. And it's not that Tiffany Ferg doesn't acknowledge this, but there are certain points where there are gaps maybe. Like when Tiffany Ferg says, you know, New York City has great public transportation. Great public transportation for who? For the people who are trying to get from one nice part of Manhattan to another nice part of Manhattan? What about for the considerable amount of neighborhoods where working class people of color have to take this bus to that bus to that train just to get into a place where money's at? just to go to freaking college. The people that I knew in college and the, the routes that they had to take every single day, the, the work that you had to do. There's talk about like the winter and how, you know, for influencers, like having these different seasons is is good for like aesthetic, you know? This kind of idea of, of cities being resources, cities being characters for people's content. And then it's like, well, then consider the poor people who have to get fucking to work and are suffering from freezing in households where heaters aren't working or heaters are being turned off abusive landlords like again this isn't me shitting on tiffany it's just to say like it's hard to watch sometimes and to hear people talk about new york city in this way for one when they're when they're not from here and they haven't seen a lot of things i mean who's from here who's not from here is actually not really that important when they're really looking at the city from a, a standpoint of, of, of generalizations and stereotypes and ways that it can be utilized by middle and upper class people. You know, at some point, Tiffany talks about like sort of how grind culture inspires a lot of influencers here. You know, the idea like, yo, people work so hard in New York City. It's like, you know, and this again, I'm not talking about Tiffany saying this. I'm talking about people who say this. Like, you think it's a game? <laughs> You think it's just cute that people go to freaking work every day and get completely exploited in their workplaces, have these low wages, that people have to come home and barely see their freaking kids and try to cook something for them, and how they're constantly being priced out from different restaurants, from different areas, how the neighborhoods that they're living in are getting increasingly more and more expensive, in great part due to these amazing transplants who come from all parts of the United States and Europe in search of this amazing New York City experience. There's an awesome video by Almonte who, come back Almonte, we miss you. But they're talking about this, this sort of issue of gentrification and this particular publication or YouTube channel or whatever that posts these videos where in these, these you know, upper class, middle class white folks go into these poor neighborhoods and find these, these gems, these hidden gems. Oh, you don't know about chopped cheese. It's the whole video about chopped cheese that I recommend people look into because it breaks down a lot of these issues of gentrification in a very important way. The fact is that gentrification is just a modern version of manifest destiny and imperialism. It's people seeing these amazing poor places, these quaint places where there's all this adventure to see and oh my goodness, look at how cheap they are eating. And it's it's like they have to eat cheap because they can't afford to eat for more expensive prices. They can't afford to eat more expensive stuff. And then these influencers and these journalists flock to these areas and drive the prices up of these establishments until eventually they're no longer at all what they used to be. They're no longer resources for people who really need resources to use. There were a lot of really interesting comments in this video. Uh, one is probably the top comment, I think, from a person named Jen says, as a native New Yorker, I hope this trend doesn't continue. I'm so, so sick of people moving to New York, gentrifying communities, complaining about how New York is a shithole, and then leaving it once they get sick of it. New York is not just another chapter in my life, and I have definitely seen more influencers just out and around making content, blocking traffic, yes, in streets and in bike lanes, and overall just using New York because it's trendy. They complain about the prices, but happily pay for it and discover places and act like an expert when they've been here for less than a year. Another commenter says, 
us working class New Yorkers have been slowly getting pushed out of our own city for the past decade. 90% of my family has left. Everyone moved to a different state because even a one bedroom apartment in a decent neighborhood could easily be $2,000. I work in sales and ask almost every customer I talk to, where are you from? And I swear maybe 80% of them are transplants from elsewhere. I barely run into anyone that's a native New Yorker. One time I asked and the person said, oh, I'm from West Virginia. I moved here because I thought it looked cool on TV slash Instagram. I'm sorry, you moved because it looked cool? It's so sad to me. The thing is, I don't knock people from moving to a city because they think that it's aesthetically beautiful. They think that there's all these cool opportunities and things to find out about there. Great. Move for the reasons you want to move. But why do we partake in this process where we, we want things for ourselves, right? We act selfishly, which is not in and of itself a bad thing. But then we don't also process the other side of like, hey, why don't I also give? And maybe some people feel like they're doing that. I know a lot of people feel like they want to avoid talking about, you know, political issues, even though a lot of these aren't political issues. It's fucking people eating, right? Political issues because they, they don't want to get criticized. And to me, like, that's kind of a cop out because like, OK, I understand it's tough to put yourself in that position. But people criticize you for everything that you do, man. People will criticize you for how you walk. People will criticize you in your comment sections, in your families, in your friend groups, for absolutely everything. For a lot of these YouTubers, they do all these clickbait titles and they do all these different possibly criticizable videos and, and different content vehicles and revenue streams. And they get criticized for all of those things. But then when it comes to taking a stand for something that you, you should care about and something that comes to helping people around you, now it's like, well, criticism. Like, you got criticism. You're not going to avoid it. At least do something. These influencers so oftentimes seem to look at these cities as resources and characters and aesthetics way more than they look at them as cities, places where people live, places where there's infrastructure needed, where there's economies in need of help. Motherfuckers can't even spell infrastructure, but they're so interested in the chopped cheese. And, and you know, I sometimes get a bit <laughs> angry about how people aestheticize New York and, and New York accents and, and New York slang and, oh, yo, bing bong, like the whole thing, right? <laughs> It's just funny to me because it's like people want to make New York to this narrow thing so badly. And if you actually live here, you realize how fucking different every single block of New York City is from one another and how interconnected it all is and how much it's entrenched in this constant story of people exploiting most of the people living there for wealth and for power. So this is all a rant. And, and I guess we should get back to the, to the focus of the video, which is talking about what these influencers can do. Because again, this is no hate video. It's certainly not a hate video to Tiffany Ferg. It's not a hate video to Axel Weber or to any content creator who moves out here. Ultimately, like live your life, do your thing, right? But when you do your thing, let's talk about how you can also make it a more sustainable, helpful thing. Doesn't everybody want to give back to the places around them at least a little bit? Everybody is taught that those things are morally correct, right? Let's get on it. Take some time out to read some news articles and to read some bulletins, to read some social media posts, to read some literature about the cities that you live in. It doesn't take much. It, it might take an hour out of your day on a deep reading day. And just learn about issues that are going on around you and use your own perspective and your open-mindedness, hopefully, to figure out how you can potentially contribute and help with those issues. The Department of Education is a complete mess. Everybody should know that. And there's so many kids, like, completely disenfranchised. I was just talking to my friend the other day, and he was talking about how he's going to quit his DOE job because of how messed it is, and how all these students, a lot of them students from immigrant backgrounds, POC, black, Latino people who are self-harming, who are going through these incredibly difficult situations at home and are struggling in school and nobody's helping them. Like, take some time out to donate to a GoFundMe or something. All the trans people that are here that are constantly subject to violence and exploitation, I mean, the list goes on and on. There are mutual aids, there are soup kitchens, there are neighborhood refrigerators, there are cooperatives, there are food drives, clothing drives. These things that range from mutual aid to charity. A lot of them are more revolutionarily involved and a lot of them are more just giving back, doing nice things. But the most important thing is that you make it oriented towards really giving a shit about the people around you. Anybody can also just 
throw some money in a basket, throw some some clothes in a basket and be like, oh, give it to the poor, right? But it's more than that. I'm asking for people who admittedly and who by trade have large platforms, by trade have influence to use a little bit of that influence to specific issues in their neighborhoods to help out people around them in their neighborhoods. Make it in efforts if you have a TikTok platform based on living in New York City, whether you're some skinny white model, whether you're a POC, whatever it is, make an effort to every now and then be like, hey, here's an organization I learned about. And if you get criticized for it, maybe the criticism will be valid. Maybe you should listen to it, read it out, think it. Out. And if it's not valid in your view, then it is what it is. But maybe you can get better at helping people. Wouldn't that be great? I would love for somebody who is showcasing how beautiful New York City is and all these different tourist locations, attractions, etc., etc., to also have clips and videos and tweets and posts and monetary contributions towards specific New York City issues that affect the majority of people living there that affect the people that put these people's lights on. It's really not hard to find out about these things. Talk to New Yorkers, make friends in New York, make friends, like meet somebody in your local store. You know what's a problem here? Fucking landlords. There was a huge rain issue in this past summer where there were these huge rainstorms that flooded a lot of people's houses because a lot of people are stuck in basement apartments. I have a friend who is a very close friend of mine who lives in a basement apartment, used to anyway, thankfully that she moved out, lives with four people in this tiny basement apartment, leakages all over the place, potential toxic sources all over the place. Rent prices hiking up more and more from a landlord who is, first of all, kind of racist, very racist, and second of all, does not give a damn about the residents and is constantly subjecting them to potential issues and only started giving a shit when his ass was potentially on the line for something legal. In that basement apartment, when those fucking rainstorms hit, guess who had to fucking clean for days and days and throw out so many of their things because they fucking got flooded in and it was fucking scary in addition to it being damaging, severely damaging for a family that already needed a lot of help that they weren't getting. You know how many friends I had to text during that time period? Like, I, again, I'm privileged. I have some cracks in the ceiling and some money problems, whatever. These fucking friends of mine or people around me in general, motherfuckers are flooded. <laughs> motherfuckers had all types of issues, electrical issues, fucking safety issues. And where were the influencers then? Where was the big, oh, I moved from LA because it's all fake over there and I wanted to go see New York City. For Where were y'all during that period of time? Did you make a, a little aside in a video about how the poors are doing badly? Or did you actually do something to contribute, to try to help out, to try to learn at least? So forgive me if maybe I seem a little bit harsh towards influencers and towards your favorite folks on the internet because it just fucking irks the soul. It irks the soul. I wanna see progress. I don't expect people to be perfect. I don't expect people to need to showcase all of their work to be completely public about everything, but I expect to see at least a percentage of effort that is extended towards something other than making money and getting popular because of New York. All right, that's that's rant, that's rant. Oh. One more thing. In the description, I have linked a particular organization that helps out families in Sunset Park. There's a lot of Mexican immigrants in that area, Latin immigrants in general, and it's focused on providing them with resources, providing them with food, providing them with different things that they need to deal with not only just the, the pandemic that has occurred, but also just life in general that has always been difficult and that has always been full of exploitation and and. Yeah, I'm donating $20 because I've made $20 off of YouTube so far off of AdSense, technically. It's not much, but, you know, it is what it is. And hopefully you can throw a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, a hundred dollars, whatever. If you like this video, patreon.com slash bbygang, two dollars a month. You can help out our little collective of creatives, make videos and other stuffs. I make music. If you're interested in that, check it out. Uh, yeah, like, subscribe. <laughs>
whatever people say in these videos. So yeah, thanks for watching. Be safe, be good to yourself. Don't criticize yourself too harshly, but always stay open and make an effort. That's all you can do.